So guys, just before we get into this video, I just want to make you aware that obviously we're going through the coronavirus situation right now. Some of the videos that you will have seen will have come out and we would have filmed probably two or three weeks ago. And I'm just trying to keep up to speed with what we're doing on our channel. So therefore, just be mindful that some of the videos you see, we will be close together. It's not because we filmed it during the coronavirus, it would have been filmed before. However, some of the videos that we are now filming is during the period of the coronavirus and we are taking precautions when we're filming these videos. We're keeping our distance away from each other, we're using hand sanitizers and we're wiping down the clubs if we're passing those over as well as the cameras. Thank you very much and be safe. Hi guys, Dan Hendrickson here at Talkie Golf Club. We're in the studio today and Titleist have sent me through some golf balls. They've sent me through a Pro V1 golf ball with a stamping of a line on it. Now I've got three lines on this particular ball and there's a dot in the middle of it, but my main focus is the actual line itself. Now I'm a player that uses a Sharpie. I draw a line on my golf ball uh, before I go out and play and I use that alignment for when I'm putting and I use it more for sort of shorter putts. So anything inside sort of 10, eight to 10 feet, I'm generally lining the ball up to the aim point of where I'm trying to get to. And therefore then I'm making my stroke from there. It just gives me a bit of confidence in my game and I've been using it probably for about 10 years now. And what I thought I would do today is we're gonna measure it. So we're gonna put it on Sam Putt Lab here in the studio. We're gonna use the line and then not use the line. And we're gonna have a little look at the changes that might be happening within my stroke or my alignment point of view um, within my putting stroke. So let's, uh, let's meet up with James. James is the head coach at Talkie Golf Club here. Let's meet up with James. Let's go through some Sam Putt Lab side of things and, um, and see if I should be using the line or not using the line. Right, Jamesy. Hello. Hello. How are we doing? Thank you very much for your time today. That's all right. No working problems. with this uh, little technique of mine. Yeah. Just, um, just give us a little rundown about the Sam Putt Lab for people that don't necessarily know what it's kind of about. Okay. Just, um, just give us a bit of a rundown on it. Yeah. So Sam's just basically a little putt to to put it simply is a putting analysis tool. Um, can be used for fittings. Um, can be used for improving your stroke. Um, and used for sort of diagnosing the ips and bits and bobs like that. Um, it's basically, it uses ultrasound. Yeah, so we attach this to your putter, and basically this talks to this. Yeah. Um, we do, uh, depends on what we're doing, but we usually hit about seven or 10 putts. Yeah. Um, that will feed back to the uh, laptop, and it will give us the information that we need yeah. um, to basically uh, diagnose a problem that, we, that, we, that we'll be seeing. Or for example, in this case, find out whether or not the line on the ball is gonna help you putt better. Right, James has got me all set up, so I've got my little uh, a device attached here that's gonna read up towards the Sam Putt Lab down on the floor. I've got my golf ball. Now, again, like I said, I've got three lines on this particular one, and I'm gonna focus on the middle line. I'm gonna ignore the sort of outer two lines, but focus purely on the middle line. Again, I don't use a dot, so I'm not gonna be using the dot. So this line here is what I'm gonna to use to line up to the aim point. Now the aim point is the point of where you wanna hit it to and then let it move off that position. So for this particular part, it's dead straight. So my aim point is gonna be the center of the hole. If I was out on the golf course and I had a subtle break, maybe from right to left, I would aim the ball out towards that breaking point, which would, let's say it's about an inch outside the hole, and I'd aim the ball at that point and then let it move in from there. So always think about a putt as a straight putt, but to an aim point. So I'm getting like three different readings from this particular experiment that we're doing here. Number one, how good am I at aligning the ball up to my aim point? Number two, how good am I at aligning my putter up to the golf ball from here? And then number three, how good is my stroke once I've got everything aligned up? Right, next part is that I don't wanna see a line at all. So I'm gonna put the ball down, but I'm gonna put it at the blank spot on top of the golf ball. So it's visually just literally looking at a golf ball with no markings. So seven more putts now without the line. Right, Jamesy, talk to me. How is my stroke looking with the line and without the line? And which one would you kind of recommend for me to carry on using? Okay, so we've got some data here, Dan. So it's, yeah. um, 
It's interesting actually. We've got two complete uh, different faces at address. So your face um, at address with the line is 1.6 open. Okay. Which is quite common for tour players. A lot of tour players will leave the face slightly open. At address, yeah. At address, yeah. yeah. Um, and then your face is actually closed uh, when you've got uh, no line. So when there's no line on the putter. And um, what's the difference in it? Um, well, it's interesting because uh, it's 1.6 open at address with, with the line yeah. and 1.4 closed. Oh, so that's a big the line. shift. It's so a big that, shift. Three yeah. degrees difference. Yeah, three degrees difference. Yeah. Wow. Which that is obviously, is amazing. yeah, which is obviously going to make a big difference um, in how you manipulate the face at impact. Yes. Yeah. Because your eyes are obviously still seeing a similar sort of thing. Yeah. Your, your eyes are still over the ball. Um, and through that, we'll have a little look at this in a second. But through that, we are definitely seeing um, differences at impact. Okay. We are definitely. We'll have a look at that now. Impact. Face at impact. Okay. Very different. Very, Very different. different. Your face is slightly open at address, but what happens is you've got quite a nice release. So although your although was it one point six open, I think you were yes, at address. address. Yeah. Um, it basically closes in so that you're point nine open at okay. impact, and that is far more consistent, as we can see on on the numbers over here. Yeah. Uh, far more consistent than when you were using no line at all. Okay. Um, whereas with the uh, when we had your face closed address with the no line yeah um, we found that you closed even more and you were 2.4 closed at impact and inconsistently right okay which would which would highlight whilst i missed a few left yeah exactly <laughs> yeah that's uh, that's good so definitely from the two results that we're seeing here now definitely me using the line has a little bit of um is more of the way forward, should we say, compared to not using the line based on the just the numbers that you're looking at right now, yeah? Yeah, so just going from address and impact, I would definitely say you're more consistent with the line. So what else have you spotted on the numbers that we've got here? Mm, well, we're seeing a little bit of trouble with your path as well. Okay. Um, so obviously we were speaking about how, especially with no line, um, how the club face was closed, and you yeah. were saying that you do sometimes miss, miss putts left. Yeah, my bad putt can be a slight pull. Mm. Definitely a slight pull if I'm gonna, especially the shorter ones, you know? Yeah. That's gonna definitely sort of uh, hurt my game a little bit. What are you noticing with my path? Yeah, I can see that. Um, so with both, uh, with both paths, both paths are left, uh, non-line and line. Um, and what I'm really seeing is I think that's a bit of a manipulation. Okay. Um, due to the fact that your putter face was open when you were using the line. Yeah. So obviously your putter face was 1.6 open at address. Um, and then because it's open, we're, so, we're sort of seeing, especially as you're a you know, reasonably good putter, we're seeing a little bit of a manipulation there with your path okay. to help the putts go to the left. But obviously if you overdo that, you are gonna see more of your putts move left. So what James is kind of highlighting to me there is the fact that my putter is coming through slightly open at impact. So I'm open at address and then I'm coming through slightly open when I get into impact. And to compensate for that face position, I'm tending to get my putter to move slightly left. So face aiming right, putter then pathwise moving slightly down the left hand side. Again, I see this so often with lots of golfers, not in putting, but when they play golf with a, you know, if they're hitting irons or driver, the club face will sit open and then they'll swing across themselves to accommodate for it. Now some people react to the fact that the face is open, some people react to the fact that their path is going left, so then they leave the face open. For me, it's then finding out, well, which is which? Is it because my face is open, so I'm reacting with my path, or is it because my path is left, so I'm reacting with my face? Now, I think it's gonna be the fact that my face is open and my path is reacting to it, because it's what it is at address. Because I've got it so far open at address, Obviously I'm rotating and closing it down, but I think my path is just reacting to the fact that my face is 1.6 degrees open at address. So, some really, really interesting numbers from what James is showing me there. Now, you've gotta be mindful that I'm actually quite a good putter. You can see I've got a, a negative in the fact that I've got the face open, but I've got a counteraction there with the way in which I swing the putter. So in turn, that kind of balances its kind of self out, however, what James has pointed out to me is that the line is definitely something that, that sort of maybe makes me concentrate a little bit better on my alignment. It certainly helps with my um, positioning. It might even help with my path a little bit. You could see that with the, without the line, I was starting to swing a little bit left. 
For me right now, what I'm gonna take from this is the fact that I'm gonna to continue to use the line. However, what I'm also gonna take into fact is that I can miss the odd putt a little bit left. So I'm just gonna take this away and work a little bit on my stroke. I'm not gonna to get too extreme with this. I'm not gonna to start to change my face at, at, at address and then start to change my path. I'm just gonna sort of see if I can start to bring that path maybe a little bit more from in to out, just to try and square it up just that fraction more. Let me know, put your comments down below. What do you think about this using a sand putt lab? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Have you used one before? It's a great bit of kit that I know a lot of pros don't necessarily have a, a putting device like the Sam Putt Lab, but it's a great bit of kit just to get a few ideas as to how your putting can work for you. I'd also like to know, do you use a line on your ball or don't you use a line on your ball? I think it's quite interesting to see players that use the line that sometimes don't really practice using it. I think it's a tool that if you're gonna use, you've got to practice using the line and learn how to line it up correctly. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Give us a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing from these videos and we look forward to catching up with you again soon.